Hey guys, welcome back to Team Deathslinger. Today, I was wrong, and I've been wrong a lot over the past month. Usually, I'm wrong sometimes. This month, I was wrong a lot. So we're going to start this comments video by looking at uh, some of the things I got wrong, uh, and then we'll go look at some of you guys' comments for the past month. Uh, so, starting with Big Z 11 on my Grace Noble Mon deck profile, he says, I will say the Leviathan changes only in Japanese regions with Block 4, so until those have an official announcement, I wouldn't play like that change exists. Uh, this is true. Uh, I didn't think about it at all, uh, but this is correct. So if you play this deck, uh, make sure you keep that in mind as well with the uh, double targeting protection on Grace Novamon and the Leviathan interaction. All right. Next we have Macarus, who says on the discard engine EX6 Dan Devimon deck profile, I don't think you can use options off Barbamon's effect because it says play cost and options just have a cost. It's a very annoying wording that comes up in other deck profiles like D Brigade. Uh, this is true. I have messed this up like three times now. Someday I will learn, I promise. Uh, that day was not the day I made that deck video. Um, but that's correct. Play cost and cost are different. And uh, I skim over that every time I do it. Um, I'm just a silly man. So uh, you cannot play options or tamers um, with the uh, Barbamon. Well, I don't know about tamers. I'd have to check that one. Uh, but I know you can't use options off of uh, Barbamon. So thank you for that. Uh, Carter Bowman on the Mallow Myotis Mon deck profile says, Thanks for doing a Myotis Mon profile. I've been playing the deck hard and have a few thoughts in response to your profile. Venom Myotis is actually crucial to the deck. The BT-15 one is great against wide boards, but the BT-2 version, with its effect to gain every suspend, has saved me many games. Using a Nuko engine and Purple Eggs has always been enough to fill my trash. Unlike most Purple decks, Myotis Mon only needs a few keywords in trash to pop off. I skip all Digilines, including any level 4s. Hard play tamers and then cycle with mummy and arukeni. It's faster overall and you want things deleted, so less investment feels better. And Omnimon's work is such a valuable piece. So, I will say about this, I did have two deck profiles that I tried. Uh, one of them was much, much, much more in line with this one. Uh, and then the, the other one I had was the one I posted. Um, my incorrect line of thinking was that I wanted to post something that didn't use arukeni uh, and Mummymon because that's what everyone else who's posting was going to use it. Um, which is kind of a silly reason not to use a, a deck profile. Uh, but that, that was my reasoning. Um, and, you know, sometimes we miss. That's fine. Uh, this guy's deck profile seems great. Um, he should definitely, uh, if you haven't read the comment, go look at that. Uh, but I thought I'd put this here because you are correct. That is a great way to play my Otis Mod. Uh, it feels good. And, uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd put that there. Uh, Trailer 500 on my Grace Noble Mod deck profile says, 2x Galga is a crime. Rowdy Rocker is also definitely not it. Um, you are... Maybe correct, but maybe also not. Um, in the Grace Noblemon deck profile, uh, I don't know if I think jamming matters. I'm always swinging with Apollomon, not Dianamon. Um, the other two champions for the deck are Searchers on Digivolve and on Play, uh, which digs you deeper than Galgamon would. So my personal preference is to find my pieces and then pop off. Uh, digging deeper feels better, I feel like, than um, the drawing a card and potentially giving your opponent an extra card. Um, Rowdy Rocker not being it, that is uh, totally okay if you feel that way. Uh, personally, I think having two of the Coronamon Inheritables under a stack uh, is just criminal and gives you so much gas. Um, I'm definitely willing to pay, pay the price on playing that option if I can do that. Um, but to each their own, uh, you, you play what you like. If you like 4x Galga and no Rowdy Rockers, then do that. Trader M Modred says, uh, on the Chaos Gallimon deck profile, Alice is only on Evo from 5 to 6, so it can't reduce Crimson Mode or Ruin Mode. I did know that. I don't know why I said you could do that in the deck profile. I actually had a whole discussion and testing about uh, figuring that out, because what I do is I'm I'm a bad noodle. I will be one of those guys who reads a card when you hand it to me, and all that information just glazes through my brain. Like, I retain none of it. Then you have to tell me what the card does, and then I will memorize an interpretation of that effect. So for Alice, my immediate brain brain juice says... Deleted Digimon, reduce cost, because that's easy to remember. Um, that is incorrect. It has to be from 5 to 6. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for that. Make sure everyone else knows. Uh, Awo Libby on Blue Gomon Goes Nuts says, Do you plan on pairing these profiles with gameplay footage? I was originally really trying to, um, but with the simulator release being two weeks after uh, the actual sets come out, um, that is really hard to do. Uh, I don't think it would be possible to get that up in a timely manner. Um Unless it's a deck that I really, really like, I don't think I'm going to do gameplay in the future, um, unless there's something, that, again, that I really like, or I'm just playing the game and happen to have a matchup that's really, really, really good. Um, but it is, it's hard to make that happen, and then I have at least half of my, my month has to be that, 
Um, and sometimes it's hard to get a good game too. Like, I don't want to absolutely stomp somebody and upload that. I don't want to get stomped and upload that. I want a game that feels kind of back and forth and gives you a reason to watch it. Um, you know, if I upload a four minute gameplay video, that's just, oh, I did the Minerva combo. I mean, cool, but I could have done that without playing against somebody. I could have showed you the Minerva combo on my own. So, uh, I guess the answer is yes and no. Uh, we'll see. I have a lot of other things that I would like to do, um, with those Wednesday video slots, um, more creative things that I want to try. Uh, so it's kind of tough dedicating, you know, four of my four Wednesday uploads to that video. Next, we have Aspol15 on Minerva. Can OTK? Hi, I've been trying the list, but I feel sometimes hard to get to level five due to three cost Evo of Mad Leo and four on Skullgrey. Another Merva list that I've been testing is the one that Dudu Destin updated on his channel. You can do consistently the infinite Merva loop with the Gobbly Engine, Lady Debbie over Blue Mara, and Jack Raid. Give it a look if you can. It's really fun, and I could beat Paledra and Tyrant decks. Uh, I did look at his profile. It is very good. There's a reason that he has um, tops and all that stuff. Um, my personal opinion on that is that if you want to play Mad Leomon, the EX6 version of the Mad Leomon deck is good. Um, I think the version I posted is plenty good. It's plenty fast. It does not feel really slow. Because um, the addition of, uh, you know, fast Amon just makes the deck tick. Um, being able to do the Alice cheat into Minerva Mon and then swing same turn uh, is really, really strong. Um, and I, I don't necessarily like fishing for sack outlets on the Doodoo Destin build. I mean, I know you draw lots and lots of cards. You have lots of search pieces. Um, but sometimes it feels bad if you can't pop your stack. So if you want to just play Turbo Minerva Loop, I would go ahead and give that uh, engine a try. Uh, I still think even in EX6, I don't think anything about his profile would probably change, honestly. Um, looking at the cards that came out, I don't I don't think you can make the, the draw discard engine any faster. Um, so I, I would imagine you just run it the same way. But if you like Mad Leomon as a card, like I do, or you just like the insurance that when attacking, you have a sack trigger, no matter what, then just stick with my version. And if you don't like that, and you think the three-cost Evo on Mad Leo is slow, uh, then ditch it, and uh, run the Doo Doo Destin version. The Pillow Man says on, does the Digimon TCG have a problem? Uh, this is a very in-depth comment. I love in-depth comments. I like to be able to respond to you guys. Um, so, he says, you never talked about buying singles or trading, both of which are generally considered to be the most cost-effective means of acquiring cards of interest. Uh, that is correct. Basing the game's cost solely on booster boxes feels a bit narrow. Um, and then, if you're keen on building specific decks, use those resources towards singles. We'll let you build a deck. Are you doing any trading? Uh, so the answer to trading is no. There's only four of us in the area that uh, play the game. Uh, trading online is sketchy, and I don't really want to do that. Um, and I don't believe I ever said outright that the card game is too expensive. I believe my point was that the video is a personal anecdote on how my group uh, plays cards and how we go about getting the decks we want to play and what we can do uh, that keeps my group interested in the game. And for us, that just happens to be buying booster boxes. Let's all grab what we want out of it. Everybody finish off your decks and let's play. Um, I understand that singles is cheaper. That is correct. Uh, but when the way your group functions is, you know, booster boxes happen to make everything easier and keep people interested. Um, we were kind of just evaluating the cost of booster boxes specifically. Um, it's not about, I mean, the card game is getting more expensive, but I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic. Uh, it's just that booster boxes are absurdly marked up and uh, that feels bad. As far as playing rogue decks in his second paragraph and having lots of uh, still excellent decks from past metas, we have those. Uh, we have played those past meta decks. Um, and, you know, when one or two cards change, the flavor of the, the deck hasn't changed. It's still playing, you know, Fenry Luga. The, the, the point of the deck hasn't changed. And, I, you know, personally, I've gotten my fill of Fenry Luga. Um, I don't have a particular interest in continuing to play it. Uh, most of us want to try new decks. As far as playing rogue decks, you're correct. I have lots of fun rogue deck profiles. But the thing about that is that those are fun deck profiles. When... One of my friends says, I want to build Tyrant, and he's running Tyrant at the table, and we play cards twice a month, so if he builds Tyrant, he's going to play Tyrant both those times at, at that table, because that's what he paid for, and he's got those opportunities to play with his friends, and that's what he wants to do. Um, t t how am I going to play a rogue deck in a Tyrant, you know? It's like, I'm just asking to lose every game, and that's difficult, because not everyone wants to sit there and lose all their games against someone who's playing a clearly better deck, I mean... It's just kind of table dynamics, right? If we're going to play rogue decks, then the majority of us need to try and play rogue decks. And sometimes that doesn't happen, which is fine. You know, I'm not complaining about that, but that's just the group dynamic. Lack of regionals is an issue. As far as registering in advance, uh, man, those things are available. Like, 
three months in advance and I can't commit to something three months in advance. I'm a student. I work. I have due dates. I've got all kinds of things going on in my life. While I would love to just register off rip and then hold that spot, um, the first issue is a money thing. I mean, if you've been a student, you know that maybe paying $40 and having it tied up in something that you may or may not do feels bad. Um, and then I feel bad taking someone else's potential spot, like somebody else who could have been ready to go. I understand there's a wait list and, you know, you might get in off the wait list if I drop out after. Um, but there's also, you know, I guess I got to remember to drop out and other things could fall through. I mean, I just don't feel good about doing something like that. Um, the reason I did the regionals I did is because it was available like three weeks before the actual play date. And I was like 80% sure that I could make it um, and then it worked out and I did. Uh, great opportunity to get resourceful, creative. Two to three of you want to go to store championships, split the costs, and the goal is to be competitive and get an invite to nationals. There's a different barrier to entry. Uh, we each get to decide how to have fun. At the end of the day, it's a hobby. You are correct. Uh, none of us want to be competitive. I've uh, stated that so many times on this channel. I am so casual, it's not even funny. Uh, my regionals runs are always... Well, the one I did was just for fun, to see how good Minerva Mon was. Uh, I understand if you want to be competitive, there's a different barrier to entry. Um, but when it brings up the price of product around it, I don't really like that. Like, BT-16 was really expensive, and a lot of people said it was because, you know, BT-16 Magna X is a card everyone wants. So if everyone's buying up all the boxes, box prices go up, uh, and then we have an issue. And that impacts everybody, not just competitive players. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put that comment in there. It was a great comment, and I just wanted to give, you know, a response that everybody could see to that. Digipanda says, while it's, still tr while it's true that Digimon has gone up in price, it is still... One of the cheaper card games to play. That being said, I can't help but wonder if high prices the cause of stores buying less or Bandai being able unable to keep up printing for its various games. Uh, I am willing to bet it's a lack of product. Uh, I've heard a couple other people think the same thing, uh, but obviously I have no inside information on whether that is true or not. Comma Team Official on Can a Digimon Deck Beat a Magic Deck says, This video is like a fever dream. It was kind of a fever dream to cook up, honestly. I mean, we, we talked about it, me and my friends. Uh, several times and we were like is this just weird is this going to be one of those things we upload and everyone's going to be like why did you do this what what was the point here or it's unfair or whatever but um i was pretty pleased with what we came out with uh at the end of the day uh and then delhi 999 says okay this is really fun because magic burn can easily delete uh defeat digimon decks but if a single digimon hits you you are basically over that is exactly our train of thought uh with this matchup um uh, my friend had popper goblins running burn and we were like okay what if each burn equals one security check it's a game of can you keep up blockers uh, and burn me out. And um, originally, the original idea too for the, the game was I have a friend who has a, a blue tempo popper deck and it involves a lot of bouncing creatures to your opponent's hand and then swinging from one. Well, swinging from one in Magic is really slow, but in Digimon where I have five security, uh, that's actually a really good matchup. So we had a couple ways that it was going to shake out and this is the one we settled on. But if we did it again, it would probably definitely be much more tailored towards uh, stopping a Digimon deck and stopping a Magic deck and seeing what we could do to um, kind of highlight the differences between the games and make it a more interesting uh, matchup. Big Z11 says, I'm not able to join the Discord. Let us in on tokens are here. Uh, I did fix the Discord link. I had no idea it was broken. Nobody said anything ever. So um, thank you, Big Z11. Now we have a working Discord link. I set this one to never expire. So if you want to join the Discord, there's a link to that in the comments down below. Smitty the Pity says, don't do this, don't give me hope. Chaos Gallant is one of my faves because of Dusk, and he's done so dirty in this card game. Dope deck profile, though, on Is It Viable EX6 Chaos Gallantmon deck profile. Um, Listen, man, he's my favorite, too. There's a reason he was my first deck profile ever. Um, I love the card. I love the arts for BT5 Chaos Gallantmon. He's never, ever gotten some love. There's always just something that could have been better. Like, if he was a three-cost Evo, that he would be so much more viable. Um, if he could pop a level six be great. He'd be a fantastic card. Uh, if his uh, second half of his effect that plays a body wasn't just your turn, if it was all turns, he'd actually synergize really, really well with the EX6 uh, cards that just came out, the Sukaimon, Witchmon, Bastionmon. Um, but none of those things are true, so it's up to us to find fun ways to play him. Uh, I think the deck is really, 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 really fun in BT17. Uh, I proxied up some of the, the new Chaos Gallimon Blast Aces, uh, that card feels really nice in the deck because the point is to get to Chaos Gallimon quickly. Um, if you sack something on your side, you get security plus one, you get the body back with Chaos Gallimon. The Inheritables can actually gain you two memory off of that so you can never be choked to one. And even if you get put to three, you can go up to five off that play. That's crazy. Um, but now it's it doesn't feel anymore like it's get Chaos Gallimon on board. Now he does nothing. And you're just swinging and hoping for the best. Uh, it feels very much more like, okay, you turboed out Chaos Gallimon. 
if your opponent swings, we're going to Blast Ace. If they don't swing, we're going to Blast Ace, and we're going to pop their body and then start swinging for a trash and a check each time. Um, and that's, that's also really good. So um, if you like this deck profile, I'll do an updated version of BT-17. Not a lot will change. It will be mostly the same, I'm sure. I'm going to figure out if those Takatos are staying or not, um, because I feel like my gut tells me I can Digivolve into that Blast Mode or Blast Ace without needing the Blitz effect. I'm pretty sure I could get there. Um, so if I drop those, there will be some ratios changing, and then the, obviously, uh, Crimson Mode Aces will be coming in. So that's it for this comment video. Let me know what you guys think of the comments down below if you have anything else that you uh, would like to say. Um, but that's it. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.